So quite a few of you guys and girls have been asking me to cover some more of the more obscure mythologies, and I did come across an Inuit tale that I found both entertaining but also quite horrendous at the same time. The story describes how a girl named Sedna became the goddess of the sea, all of its creatures, and the underworld. The story of Sedna is often used by the Inuit as a creation story, describing how certain animals came to exist and how Sedna came to rule the ocean and the underworld. Now I came across at least five different variations of Sedna's story, each one as joyous and confusing as the last. The first version describes Sedna as the giant daughter of Anguta, the god of creation and a highly respected deity amongst the Inuit. Now for whatever reason, he decides not to feed his daughter, so she lashes out and attacks him because she's hungry, a sentiment that I'm sure many of us can relate to. He then does what every good dad would do when his daughter tells him that she's hungry, he throws her into the ocean. But don't worry, he does get a chance to redeem himself when Sedna tries to climb back into the boat. You'd think this is the part where he pulls Sedna back in, the lesson is learnt and they go and get some food, right? Well if you did, you'd be wrong, because this is the part where he sees Sedna hanging onto the boat for dear life and then decides to cut off her fingers, leaving her to sink into the sea and become the ruler of the underworld and the monsters of the deep. Sedna's big fat sausage fingers will then form the first seals, whales and walruses, all three being animals that were hunted by the Inuit. Now if you thought that story is a little bit weird and quite messed up, then there's plenty more to come, so don't worry. In the second version of this story, Sedna is upset by the quality of men provided by her father. So she then decides, you know what? Screw men, I'm gonna marry my dog. We're gonna get a king-sized kennel, and we're gonna live happily ever after, and nothing's gonna go wrong. Needless to say, her father wasn't exactly thrilled at the prospect of his new son-in-law being a dog, so he handled the situation the only way he knew, by once again throwing Sedna into the sea and cutting off her fingers when she attempted to climb back into the kayak. You may be sensing a pattern here with Sedna's father not exactly being the greatest person, but there is a version where Sedna is an orphan, though this version isn't too cheery either. The people of the village never really liked Sedna, so in an attempt to get rid of her, they drowned her and chopped off her fingertips, but this time her fingertips transformed into seals and walruses that saved Sedna and took her into the sea. I guess in this version Sedna has somewhat of a happy ending, because she goes on to marry a fish and lives happily ever after? There is one story where Sedna is a beautiful young woman, who rejects all the marriage proposals from the hunters in her village, probably because everything we've seen so far suggests that she's more into dogs and fish. Her father is then approached by a mysterious hunter, who offers him some fish in exchange for his daughter. Her father of course accepts this proposal, because why waste all that time fishing when you can just trade your child for some fish? I'm sure most of you have heard the saying, give a man a fish, and you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish, and he'll probably just ignore everything you've just taught him, and trade his daughter for some fish anyway. I think that's how it goes. So Sedna's father gives her a sleeping potion, and then trades her to the hunter, who takes her back to his nest on a cliff. The hunter then reveals himself as a giant bird spirit, and Sedna wakes up surrounded by a bunch of birds, wondering what life would be if she had a caring father. He does try to redeem himself by rescuing Sedna, but when he sees the bird spirit creating an enormous storm in its anger, he abandons all plans of being a hero, and once again throws Sedna overboard. At least this time he doesn't chop off her fingers, although her hands do freeze and her fingers fall off anyway. It doesn't really seem like Sedna's ever going to catch a break in these stories, but this one does end with her growing a fishtail, making her somewhat of an Inuit Little Mermaid, just without any fingers, or the Disney movie. Most of these stories have quite similar themes, you have Sedna who doesn't really do anything wrong, you have her douche of a father who in most stories throws her into the sea and cuts off her fingers. These fingers then go on to form marine life and Sedna makes the sea her new home. She would often be seen as quite a vengeful goddess, and considering the circumstances that led to her becoming the goddess of the sea, you can definitely see why she may be a tad angry. It was a common belief that hunters would have to pray to Sedna, because it said that she held all of the animals of the sea in her hair. She would only release these animals to be hunted when she was happy. Needless to say that controlling the supply of food meant that Sedna was a well-respected goddess that no one wanted to anger. Most people would throw offerings into the sea and sing songs for Sedna. There are even tales of shamans transforming themselves into fish, travelling into the depths of the ocean and then combing and braiding Sedna's hair, essentially playing the role of a parent soothing their child. The story of Sedna is quite a tragic one when you think about it, but she does end up living among the creatures of the sea, which she appears to prefer the company of, so I guess it's not all bad. There are a few interpretations of Sedna that paint her in a more positive way. She is seen as a reminder that despite your circumstances, the outcome can always be positive. Sometimes you may have to delve into the dark and cold places that you fear the most in order to find the riches that await. I feel like this is a notion that not only refers to tackling your fears, but is also quite symbolic of the ocean. If you have previously heard tales of Sedna, then let me know which version you came across in the comments below. As always, I've been your host, Mythology and Fiction Explained.